Okay, we are almost there. All the pieces have been fit and trimmed and fit me beautifully. It is now time to make sure that they can hold onto my body, and that is adding all the leather straps and buckles that secure it together. Whew, keep it together, Savage. By the end of the day, I'm going to be wearing a suit of armor from Excalibur made by Terry English. Okay. Yeah, it feels yeah. great. It feels like... So nice and close. Put a mark on that way, good at home. Okay. So when you're doing a film, do you have you don't have you don't have a ton of access to the actors all the time, do you? No. Um, ideally, yeah. Or invariably, I, I use um, life casts. Oh right, people. yeah, body it's cast. Also a great help, but. On other occasions, you just have to do it by measurements. This is what, what, what I've done with you, virtually. Yeah, yeah. As well as we're going along, but it's just going to go to there. Right, just get that there, old man. So it's nice and comfy. Because they will be edged on there. So you're going to lose a little bit anyway. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'll just clear those slightly. So that's, that's about in the right position there. Yeah, about. Right. right, if you stay like that. Okay. So when this is all done on leathers, a lot of people when they make armour, like the Italian suits and some of the Indian stuff is made in India, all these are, they think these are rivets that are riveted together, but they're false rivets. And what is is a piece of leather behind it, three leather straps. So, so it can move in yeah, the body. Yeah, exactly. So, so the whole thing actually will concertina. Ah. And that's how it works. If these rivers is solid, you wouldn't be able to move. Right, right, right. <laughs> and that's why people say, how did they wear armour? Well, they couldn't, <laughs> not if it's made like that. That's the difference. So just to talk about the multiple engineering solutions there are for holding the armor together to protect the wearer. Um, we have some uh, movable rivets holding the elbow cop to the forearm and the upper arm. Um, and these rivets on the side here aren't actually holding these upper arm pieces together. They're held together by leather straps. So the leather straps allow this to have all this extra movement that's much greater than it would have if it was just a straight mechanical connection holding the arm to the pauldron. The breastplate buckles over the top to hold the shoulder on, and it's feeling pretty good. Just mark it B for buckle. You can do it with that rivet set. Just set it in there. You, oh, look at that. Always leave a little square on the end. Mm -hmm. And just round those off. It just gives it a really nice looking finish. Mm -hmm. And then the holes want to go about roughly half inch apart, so if you do about there, and that's it, leave that as a tag. Done. Most people, a lot of people that put holes all the way to end, it just looks ugly. That bit's only for pulling it. Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah. Got it. So that's the structure of six of them. I'm on it. And where you go. All right. Terry, would you believe we had the exact same amount of each of the two types of buckles? We had. Like, we have exactly oh, really? this number of keepers as buckles that Some I brought things down are meant to, to be. the letter. <laughs> I'm going to have a quick five minute doing nothing other than thinking.
I think I'm all right. Oh, okay. Then you, you rivet, and then the, the rivet set will take it all the way down. And use the side of the handle with that. Oh. We're getting close. It's buckle time. These are the last straps on the breastplate. <laughs> well, you'll be putting it on in a minute. <laughs> Shall we put it on? Why not? Oh. See what happens, eh? Okay. Yeah. I mean, it must have sucked if, you're, if your page, like, died. Right? You don't have anyone that can get you back out of it. I'm going to pull you about a bit. Yeah? Right? It feels really comfortable. Oh. This is the first time putting yeah. it on. Mm -hmm. Tacit. Right. Arms. We're getting there, guys. Two arms. Get it? Two arms. I'm sure you haven't heard that joke before. Okay. Can you sink down for me? Still on Sean used to. Sean used to do it automatically. Touch my face. Mm. <laughs> That's the idea. Probably shouldn't touch my face. Yeah, no. Beautiful, Terry. Still so needs, amazing. Still needs a little bit of tweaking here and there. But. Mm -hmm. With over 200 separate pieces of cut, shaped, measured, hammered, and polished aluminum, uh, they're not only riveted together, like you saw me do for a bunch of this, but they're also strapped together. Uh, and Terry, among the things he asked me to bring with me were some buckles. So I found these really nice brass looking buckles. I say brass looking because they're not actually brass, it turns out. Uh, but we attach some keepers to them so they hold the leather straps down and we've already put a dozen in the breastplate with the uh, tassets and the placard. We have the gauntlets mostly finished and if you remember these finger lambs I did back in San Francisco when I thought they were called lames but that was just my pronunciation that was lame not the little sections. Um, the gloves are glued to these. They feel awesome to wear and the helmet is looking so magnificent. Um, this still requires a few buckles and some engineering to get it to attach to this, but we are making fantastic progress. Oh, right, that's going to be the plume hold here. Yeah. Right, you cut that out very well, I mean. Thank you, sir. Now we make this on this. Now, can you guess what it is? Uh, 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 part of a plow? No. All right. Um, <laughs> Good guess there. Uh, it's something to do with water and oil. Let me put it that way. It, uh, for making a hole in a 55 gallon drum. It would do that. Yeah, <laughs> it would. <laughs> no, I'll tell you what it is. It's, uh, I'm not sure what the date is, but it's probably about, um, I don't know, 1700. And it's for making funnels. 
the funnel mandrel. Wow. You make the big piece out of that for the funnel. And then the small piece and out the of that. small piece out of that. It's such a beautiful funnel. piece of metal. You could also defend your castle with it. So it's basically, that's why it's shaped like that, because mm -hmm. it's, it makes the thing for the funnel. So if we just bend these out. Uh, let's get rid of the cigarette. <laughs> Mm. Now I'm going to give you the pleasure of riveting that on. Oh good, I will do that. After you've polished it, which I know, uh, yes. I know you enjoy so <laughs> much. <laughs> Again, these don't want to be tight, they just want to locate rather than right, hold. Right, right. As if you're mounting a horse. Oh. Yeah, that's it. Look at that. I feel like I could wear this in public. I mean, it's like, I just remember, this started out as a flat sheet of aluminum a few days ago. Oh yeah, sorry. All right, Terry. That's we got the last rivet in. It's yeah. now. What's the last? What's the last bit well, we have to do? A few battle scars would look good, wouldn't it? Excellent. Yeah, they, I'm all for battle scars. I always do that now. I never <laughs> actually did it on a scanner, but they developed their own, so it was okay. But now, whenever I make armors, I always put a few dings in it because it's going to happen anyway. Yeah. And it just looks good. It looks I good. agree. Okay. It, it looks like you've been using it in battle. That's all. And this is my very special hammer. Yeah. No other hammer seems to work for this. It's really nice and weighty. It's got a really nice edge on it. And I've had that for 35 years, at least. So, you just get it straight on there. And it's literally just a thing. <laughs> and you do another one. And that way you do, instead of hitting it straight to make it different, you yeah. it slightly on the edge. That went too much, so I missed it. <laughs> so we just take that out of it. Oh wow! Yeah. It leaves a really nice. Thing out. So we do one on the knee. Just like the knee. Oh, we've got a nice little one there. And these have got to be a bit gentle. This is this is cool. the the final aesthetic pass, right? Got it. That one there. Don't too much on the grease. That's really enough. Excellent. If you overdo it, it looks a bit silly. <laughs> uh, the other foot too much and
also my favorite part, right? I say sometimes I build stuff just so I can weather it and add that final bit of like individuation that makes the whole thing come to life. When you've restored armor for museums, have you come across, you've come across battle scars, I'll bet. Oh yeah. The armor is finished. No. No? Stamps. Stamps! Right! <laughs> it's my seal of approval that you've done your work properly. <laughs> Must have made that probably 50 years ago. Really? And it's still working. <laughs> yeah. That's the maker's work. But we need to... A little eye in there. Oh! Because <laughs> Adam helped make it. <laughs> oh, look at that! Oh my gosh! <laughs> right, let's do the other one. That's yeah. super exciting. It's better. Add a little eye here. Get down. Yeah, that's so hard. That's better. Not so hard. Beauty. Okay. And with this, with this hammer, I, I don't mean to be too dramatic, but with this hammer blow, this armor is totally complete. Yeah, I guess it is. <laughs> All right, Good it's one. time for the final fitting. <clears throat> yeah. Wonderful. Oh, and it smells good too. Perfect. Yeah. Amazing. Good. Amazing. Amazing. Oh, oh, oh. Not you. <laughs> so Adam. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. This is why I'm meeting Excalibur. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh, I have to run through the woods, right? That's what I have to do now. I'm amazed I can run in this. You can do anything in it. Oh. Now, if you want any dragon slaying, he's your man. <laughs> <laughs> TLDR, with 50 years of experience, you can turn this into this. <laughs>